tonight's topic is called the last shall be first and the first shall be last. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. Okay, Matthew 20 verse 1. Let's start. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 20 verse 1. For the kingdom Read. of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. To hire laborers into his vineyard. So this man that is an householder is talking about Christ. He went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 7. Let's understand what is the vineyard he's hiring laborers for. Isaiah 5 verse 7. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. You see that thing? The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. So this vineyard is talking about the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel and the work that must be done to raise up the 12 tribes. Go back to where was that? Matthew 20 verse 1. The book of Matthew chapter 20 verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. To what? It says to do what? To hire laborers into his vineyard. To hire laborers into his vineyard. So the vineyard is the house of Israel. That's what the vineyard is. The, the house of Israel is the vineyard. Read on. Verse 2. Come on. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Read that again. Book of Matthew 20 verse 2. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He says, when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny, a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. That's some heavy stuff right there. Read verse 2 again. The book of Matthew chapter 20 verse 2. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. So now this penny is going into what? The penny is the kingdom. The penny here is the kingdom. Give me second Ezra chapter 2 verse 35. Second Ezra chapter 2 verse 35. The penny is the vineyard. The penny is the reward, which is what? The kingdom of heaven. Read what you got. Second Ezra 2 verse 35. Second book of Ezra chapter 2 verses 35. Come on. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. Be what for the be ready to the reward of the kingdom. So this is the Lord is speaking to us. It says, be ready to the reward of the kingdom. So that penny that was that we are hired for, you guess what that is? That penny is the kingdom of heaven. That penny is the reward, the promises. Okay, read that again. Second book of Ezra chapter 2, verse 35. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. Come on. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. That everlasting light is talking about Christ that will shine upon us forevermore when we are in the kingdom, when we have received that rest in the first resurrection. Jump down to verse 37 now. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad. Give thanks unto him that hath called you to the heavenly kingdom. Read that again, verse 37. Second book of Ezra chapter 2, verses 37. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad, give, giving thanks unto him that hath called you to the heavenly kingdom. So now he says, oh, receive the gift. The, what is the gift? The penny. The gift is the penny, which is the kingdom of heaven. He says, oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad. So you must what? You must be happy. Don't be murmuring and complaining when your gift is given unto you. Giving thanks. Instead, this is what this, the spirit we must have. We must give thanks, okay? Giving thanks unto him that had called you to the heavenly kingdom. So we must give thanks to the Lord for calling us into this truth, into his vineyard to do the work, okay? We must give thanks because the children of Israel, we have a disease called murmuring and complaining. That's the disease we got, you understand? So that's the spirit we must purge out of our minds. Go back to where he was at now. Matthew chapter 20 verse 2. The book of Matthew chapter 20 verse 2. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. You see that thing? When he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day. What is that penny? The kingdom, the reward, the gift that we're supposed to give thanks unto the Most High God for receiving that gift. 
Give me the book of Sirach, chapter 40 now. Sirach, chapter 40 and verse 28, I believe. I need to write that down. Let me look at it. No, Sirach 40, verse 18. Read that for me. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 40, verse 18. Uh-huh. To labor and to, to be what? content. To labor. To labor. To labor. To labor. Remember, Christ is hiring laborers into his vineyard. So Sirach is saying to what? To labor. To labor. We must labor in the Mosai's vineyard. That's why each and every one of us in here, the man and the woman, you are called to labor into the Mosai God's vineyard. The Lord is the one that's doing the hiring. Okay, come on. To labor and to be content with that a man has. To be what? Life. Hold on, to hold be, on. To be what? To labor. And to be content with that. To be content. Had. To be content. That's why it says giving thanks. Go back to Second Ezra two thirty seven. Go back there. Second Ezra two verse thirty seven. Second book of Ezra chapter two verses thirty seven. Mm-hmm. Oh, receive the gift that is given you, and be glad, giving thanks unto Him that hath called you to the heavenly kingdom. You see that thing, giving thanks unto him that had called you to the heavenly kingdom. So we must give thanks. And when you give thanks, he says, be glad, giving thanks. Be content with that which the Lord has given unto you. Go back to Sirach 40 verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 40 verse 18. To labor and to be content with that a man had is a sweet life. Is a what? Sweet life. Is a sweet life. So you must labor and be content with that which you're going to receive up based on your labors. He says, you're going to what? It's a sweet life. That's the reward he's going into. Go ahead. But he that findeth the treasure is above them both. You see that thing? But he that findeth the treasure is above them both. Guess what? What is that treasure? The penny. That treasure is the penny, the kingdom of heaven that shall be established upon the earth. You understand? The Bible is a representation of the kingdom. So, but we must do that which is written first so we can receive that kingdom. But it's already written that we will receive the kingdom if we endure until the end, if we labor until the end. Give me Daniel chapter 7, verse 20, verse 18. Daniel 7, verse 18. Read that thing. Okay. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 18. Come on. But the saints of the Most High shall take the but, kingdom. But the what? But the saints of the Most High. The saints. The saints of the Most High. Who are the saints? The 12 tribes of Israel. We are the saints. If you read Psalms 148 verse 14. We the saints of the Most High God. Come on. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And possess the kingdom forever. Even forever and ever. You see that thing? That's the promise. That's the penny. That's the reward. That's the gift. You understand? That's Ezra is talking about. That we must be content with. Go jump down to verse 27 now. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. You see that thing? That's the, that's the penny. That's the penny right there. That's the penny. Go back to where he was at. Matthew chapter 20, verse 2. Again. The book of Matthew chapter 20, verse 2. Mm-hmm. And when he had agreed, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He says, when he had what? And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. So you see what he says right there? He says, when he had agreed with the laborers, we are the laborers. So Christ made, he, he made an agreement with us, a covenant. Okay? That's the agreement he's making reference to. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent the laborers into his vineyard to do what? To do the work. Okay? So we made an agreement to labor to bring forth the kingdom. That's what he's talking about right there. We made an agreement to labor into the Most High God's vineyard for a penny a day. You see that part right there? Read verse 3. Read 2 and 3 together. Now, watch this. 
the book of Matthew, so the 20, verse 2. And Come when on. he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, mm -hmm. he sent them into his vineyard. Come on. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Read verse 3 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 3. And, when, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So now he's saying, remember, he's hiring laborers, okay, to come and work into the vineyard. You understand? And we made an agreement. We agreed that we agreed to labor for a penny a day. Watch this. It says, and he went out, he went about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So those that are standing idle in the marketplace is our people that do, have not received this truth. Those that are standing idle in the marketplace is our people that have not received this truth as of, as of yet. And our job is to go out there and bring the truth to them. That's why I tell you, brothers, sharpen your skills. We must make sure that we're on social media and all that, on the streets, all of that. That's why we're doing the projects that we're going to be working on. Okay, read verse 3 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 3. And he Come went on. out, and he went out about the third hour, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So now when he says about the third hour, remember the third hour is what time? Is 9 a.m. That's the third hour. Okay, 9 a.m. That's the third hour. So it says about the third hour. He, so that's the morning now. You understand? He's bringing laborers into his vineyard. So this goes into time. You understand? The third hour, it goes into time. I want to deal with that thing. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book. Hmm, before you get me that, wait. Go back up to verse 2. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 2. Come on. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. So now the vineyard, we discover that the vineyard is what? The 12 tribe, the nation of Israel, that's the vineyard. So Christ is the householder and he's hiring laborers into his vineyard for a penny a day. So now the people that are being hired is the nation of Israel, all 12. But there's an order to do two things. The Lord does things in order. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Zechariah 12 verse 7. Let's see who was hired first. Who's being hired first this day? Watch this. Zechariah 12 verse 7. The book of Zechariah chapter 12 verse 7. Read. The Lord also shall save the tent of Judah first. Shall what? The Lord also shall save the tent of Judah first. So the Lord is going to save the tents of Judah first. The Lord is going to wake up the tribe of Judah first. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Judah, particularly the tribe of Judah, being in the front lines. Okay? So these are the first laborers. You understand? Judah is hired first. Read that part again. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 7. Read. The Lord, the Lord also shall save the tent of Judah first. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That's the first laborers into the vineyard. Go ahead. That the glory of the house of David. The glory the of the glory. house of... Hold on. The glory says that the glory of the house of David. Remember, the glory of the house of David is going into Christ. Go ahead. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So the reason why the Lord is, is hiring Judah first is so that Ephraim do not what? Do not magnify themselves against Judah. You understand? So guess what? This is all spiritual. This is a spiritual thing. Because even in, even in when, even especially when brothers and sisters come in, there will be a northern kingdom that comes in that will want to magnify himself against those that came before him. You understand that? Read that again, verse 7. The book of Zechariah is the 12 verse 7. The Lord Read. also shall save the tents of Judah first. Read. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Watch this. Because that, why is the Lord doing this? This is for order. To, for order's sake. To make sure that there's order when the, no, the, mo, the, mo, when the nation of Israel has been raised up. There must be order. That's why Judah is raised up first. Judah is the first laborers. Watch this. Once Judah is raised up, this is what Judah will do. 
Watch this. Give me the book of uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Luke 14, 23. The book of Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Read. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. You see that thing? Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So guess what? Guess what Judah will do? Because the Lord says he's going to raise the type, the tribe of Judah first. Judah are the first hire, I mean the first laborers into the vineyard. So when the Judah is raised up, Judah will go to the seat corners to what? To compel the people to come into this truth. That is what he's saying right there. They will go out and do the work. Give me Deuteronomy 33 verse 7. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 7. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 7. Come on. And this is the blessing of Judah. What is this? And this is the blessing of Judah. That blessing of Judah, we read about it in Zechariah 12, verse 7. Come on. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. And what did he say? Him, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. It says, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Because where would Judah be at? Judah would be in the seat corners laboring in the, in the Mosaic God's vineyard. You understand? Because Judah is the first laborers into the vineyard. You understand? They will go to the seat corners to teach the tribes who they are. That's Judah's blessing. Judah will be the one that will be in the front lines. Judah will be the one that will be doing what? Judah will be the one that looking for information to put the pieces of the puzzle together so that when the people come in, the people learn and understand what this Bible is saying. Read that part again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 7. Come and on. this is the blessing of Judah. And he Read. said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Come on. And bring him unto his people. And do what? Bring him unto his people. So the blessing of Judah will be to do what? Judah will be able to go out there and wake the people and teach the people who they are. And in order for Judah to do that, Judah, Judah will be brought to his own people. How will Judah going to know that's the people right there? Because the Lord will put the spirit on Judah to do what? To know those people right there, that's Israel over there. The Lord will put the spirit on Judah to know that stuff. Okay? That's why he says, and bring him unto his people. In order for Judah to be brought to his people, Judah must know who his people are. That's why we have the sign. That's why we have Bantus over there. Because if you look at the, 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 the 12 tribes moving around, you don't see Bantu over there. All the 12 tribes signed on the internet, you don't find Bantu over there. Why? Because that has not been, that wasn't revealed unto them. But all praise to the most side, the Lord had favor on us in this camp to bring it out. Okay, read that part again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 7. Come on. And this is the place of Judah. Read. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Come on. And bring him unto his people. Read. His hands be sufficient for him. Uh -huh. And be thou and help to him from his enemies. You see that thing? It says, and it says, and let his hands be sufficient for him. Meaning what? The most high God is going to give us the spirit enough for us to do what? To gather the information together, to put the pieces together, the history books, the historical sources and all of that, and the understanding of the scriptures first and foremost, to give the people the sense. That's the blessing of Judah. That's what Judah will do. Okay, come on. It says, and be thou and help to him from his enemies. The Lord is going to be what? The Lord is going to keep, put the spirit on Judah to be a help. To the rest of the tribes against the enemies that dis, that what that are oppressing us. Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 9. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter. We're still dealing with the first laborers into this vineyard, which is Judah. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, verse 9. But Come wisdom on. delivered from pain those that attended upon her. You see that thing? But wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her. Because when Judah is raised up, what, guess what Judah will do? Judah will attend unto wisdom. The wisdom that the, the blessing that the Lord will put upon Judah is what? The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding. Apt to teach. You see that thing? 
but wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her. When Judah is raised up, Judah will attend his ear unto wisdom. Guess what the Lord will use? To guess what the Lord will do with the wisdom that he will dispense upon Judah. Jump down to verse... Jump down to verse 15. You know what? Verse 12. Read verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 12. Uh -huh. she, she defended him from his enemies. She did what? Defended him from his enemies. So the wisdom that the, the spirit of wisdom that the Lord will put upon the tribe of Judah, which is the first laborers into the vineyard, guess what? The, guess what they will do? There's that spirit of wisdom, he says, will defend him from his enemies. Go back to Deuteronomy 33, verse 7 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 7. Read. And this is the blessing of Judah. Come on. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Read. And bring him unto his people. Come on. Let his hands be sufficient for him. Uh -huh. And be thou an help to him from his enemies. You see that thing? And be thou an help to him from his enemies. Because how he's going to be an help? Guess what? The spirit of wisdom will be dispensed upon the tribe of Judah. Because they are the first laborers into the vineyard. That's why you see us out there waking the people up. Why? Because we are the first laborers into the vineyard. The Lord will put upon us the spirit of wisdom to know how to teach and how to bring the people in and give them the sense and build them up in the spirit of Christ. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 12 again. Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 12. Come on. She defended him from his enemies. He did what? She defended him from his enemies. He's been, he says, be, be thou an help to him from his enemies. Because the spirit of wisdom will be with Judah. Go ahead. Kept and kept him safe from those that lay in wait. You see that thing? And kept Judah safe from those that lay in wait. Because the target is the black man. The black man is a Judite. Okay? Because the nations know what the black man is capable of doing. Because they understand. They read this Bible. They know once he gets hold of this Bible, it's over. It's over and done with. They know that thing. That's why they keep the black man entertained. The other tribes, yes, but particularly the black man. Look at what happened during, during the 60s, okay? During the 1900s over here. You understand? Look what they did during the 1913s. You understand? What was they doing to the black man? Destroying the black man. In the 70s, what was they doing? Destroying the black man because they know the importance of the black man, the tribe of Judah. You see, that spirit of a lion, they understand that thing. Okay? Read that thing again, verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 12. Come on. She defended him from his enemies and kept him safe from those that lay in wait. Because the people are always laying wait to destroy the black man. Go ahead. And in a sore conflict, she gave him the victory. She did what? And in a sore conflict, she gave him the victory. You see, that what is that victory? We're going to get the kingdom. Go ahead. That he might know that all godliness is stronger than all. That he might know that godliness is stronger than all. So as we go into the scriptures, we start to understand that godliness is stronger than anything on earth. Because guess what? The spirit of wisdom is with us. Okay, jump down to verse 15 now. Watch this. She delivered the righteous people. And blameless seed from the nation that oppressed thee. Read that again, verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 15. She delivered the righteous people and blameless seed from the nation that oppressed them. You see that thing right there? She delivered the righteous people, meaning what? The children of Israel that kept the commandments. You understand? And blameless seed from the nation that oppressed them. That is what's going on right now. You understand? That's when Judah gets hold of this Bible, Judah will cause havoc on this earth. That's what's going on. That's what you are seeing right now. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis chapter 49. Okay? Those of you that have attended the classes when I was going over the tribes, okay, this shouldn't be anything new for you. Okay? But for those that have not, I'm going to have to go over those classes again so, and record them so you can, so I don't have to go over them again. Genesis 49 verse 8. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. 
Read that again. The book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Read. Tuta, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. You see that thing? It says, Jura, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. How is the other, the brethren is talking about the other tribes. They're going to praise the tribe of Judah. Why? Because the Lord is the, the Lord will raise up Judah first. Once Judah gets hold of this Bible, Judah will go out because Judah will know who his people are. So he can defend the rest of the tribes from their enemies. And the Lord will what? The Lord will be with the tribe of Judah. Go ahead. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. You see that thing? Judah's hand will be the neck of the enemy. Who's the enemy? Edom. Esau. He's the, he's the first on God's hit list. He's the head of the villages. Give me Habakkuk 3 verse 14. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 14. The book of Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 14. Come on. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. You see that thing? It says, Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. Who's the head of the villages? He's talking about Esau, Edom. Go ahead. Did you know what? Start at verse 13. Read verse 13. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 13. Read. Thou went forth for the salvation of thy people. Thou did what? Thou went forth for the salvation of thy people. So Christ, he went forth for the salvation of his people. Go ahead. Even for salvation with thine anointed. You see that thing? Even for salvation with thine anointed. Go ahead. Thou wouldest, thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. You see that thing? Thou wouldest, thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. The head of the wicked is talking about Esau, Edom. Okay, America. Go ahead. By discovering the foundation upon the neck, Salah. You see that thing? By discovering the foundation unto the neck. That's why it says, go back to Genesis 49 verse 8. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 8. Read. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Come on. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. You see that thing? Judah's hand will be in the neck of the enemy. Judah's hand will be in the neck of the enemy, meaning what? Judah will go toe to toe with the enemy. You understand? In the last days. Even during the, in the last days. Look at the 60s. Look at the 70s. Look at the 1900s with um, Sophia Town and all that. You understand? Um, Soweto, uh, Sharpville Massacre and all that. What was we doing? We were going toe to toe with the enemy. You understand? Look at what's going on today with politics. The 1994 saga. But today, look at those people that want to fight with the enemy. They started political organizations and all of that. Your EFFs and all of that. Yes, that's what he's talking about. Toe to toe with the enemy. But the technique they use is not the spirit of the Lord. That's not what the Lord ordained. So, but we're going to go toe to toe with the enemy in the last days when the Lord will what? will send forth his apostles last. That's what you are seeing right now. We are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy in the spirit of Christ. And we shall win. Okay? Read verse 14. Come on. Go back. Go back to Habakkuk 3, verse 14. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 14. Come on. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. Read. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Come on. The rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Okay, let's go back. Genesis 49 verse 8. Because their rejoicing is to devour the poor secretly. But the Lord had a secret weapon. Who's that secret weapon? The tribe of Judah. You understand? The tribe of Judah is that secret weapon. Genesis 49 verse 8. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Come on. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Read. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Come on. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Because what Judah will do, Judah will go to the street corners to wake up the tribes who they are and teach them the gospel of Christ. Because Judah is the first, we are the first laborers into the vineyard. That's why when you see Judah waking up, 
Guess who follows? Benjamin. Because Benjamin was always with Judah. You understand? Judah and Benjamin, they were very tight. Judah and Benjamin, always tight. Then Levi joined us. Okay? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. But Judah and Benjamin, always, always, all the time. Okay? Read verse 8 one more again. The book of Genesis, chapter 14 and verse 8. Judah, Come on. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Read. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Come on. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So what you are seeing here is the blessing that will be bestowed upon Judah. The first laborers into the vineyard to go out there and do what? Behind enemy lines to fight with the enemy with this, in the spirit of Christ. That is what we are doing. That's why the nations are in an uproar right now. When we go to camp, the Arabs be passing, taking thick videos, taking pictures. Iroma is doing that. Everybody's in an uproar because they don't understand what's going on. You know why? You ever seen, you know, like in the in the bundus and all of that, when they say they know a funeral is going to happen, they, so on, they see ants gathering together. They say, no, these ants, man, it's weird. What are they doing? You understand? It meaning what? There's some strange thing going on. When you see us going to camp like that, the way we stand, how we teach and all of that, it's a strange thing. What is it? That's the sign that something bad is coming on this earth. That something evil is coming on this earth. And guess what? The nations know that thing. The only people that is asleep is the black man and the black woman. They are asleep, buried in YouTube, buried in Instagram, and buried in the black woman's coochie. That's what's going on. Everybody done confused. The other nations, they understand what's going on. They know we are a sign of the end times. Something bad is coming. Their time is over. They know that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 14. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 14. We're still dealing with the, the first laborers into this vineyard. Okay. Isaiah 41 verse 14. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 14. Fear not. Thou own Jacob. He says, fear not, thou worm, Jacob. Why is he calling us a worm? Because we have no power in this land. That's why he's calling us a worm. We have no power. The only power we got is to keep the commandments. Read the part again. The book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 14. Read. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. Come on. And ye men of Israel. The Lord is commanding us, he says, fear not, I got you. Go ahead. And ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So the Lord is promising us is that he's going to help us. That is what you are seeing right now. The Lord is helping us. Come on. Verse 15. Read. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having what? teeth. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Read it again. The book is this. Chapter 41, verse 15. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. You see that thing? Verse 14, he says we are a worm. Verse 15, you see what he says he's going to do? He says, I'm going to make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. The Lord is going to give us power. Right now, he's giving us that spirit to do what? To wake our people up. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 14. Verse Fear 15. Not. Verse 15, come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 15. Behold, mm -hmm. I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Come on. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. Thou shalt what? Thresh the mountains. We shall thresh the mountain, meaning we're going to destroy these kingdoms. The Lord is saying thou shalt thresh the mountains. Guess what? Guess the greatest, the greatest mountain right now is what? Babylon the Great, the greatest government on earth. That is what we are doing right now. Behind enemy lines, going toe to toe with the enemy in the spirit of Christ. Read. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small. Uh -huh. And shall make the hills as chaff. You see that thing? These hills is talking about what? These greatest governments on earth. Guess what we are doing right now? We are tearing them up spiritually. Because the spirit, the, the evils that they build in the minds of our people to keep our people in prison, mental slavery, our job is to tear all that down so our people can what? Build the tower of righteousness over them. That is the job what Judah will do. 
When Judah gets hold of this Bible, that's what Judah will do. You understand? That's the laborers into the vineyard. Watch this. Give me the book of Hosea now. Give me Hosea chapter 8, I believe. Hmm, I need to write this down. Just popped into my head. Give me Hosea 8. Hosea chapter 8 real quick. Let me look at it. It's been a while. Hosea chapter 8 and verse... Hmm, one, one second. Uh, yes, yeah, Zechariah, 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 not Hosea. Give me Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse, start at verse 12. Zechariah 9 verse 12. Watch this. Okay. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. This is what the Lord promised that he would do. Watch this. Okay. The book of Zechariah. Chapter 12. Chapter 9, verse 12. Come on. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 12. Read. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Ye what? Prisoners of hope. We are the prisoners of hope. The hope we have is the hope we have in the Lord. That's the hope, but we are the prisoners. Go ahead. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. The Lord is going to what? The Lord is going to give us judgment to what? To revenge on these nations. Go ahead. When I have bent Judah for me. When I've done what? Bent Judah for me. So the Lord says he's going to bend Judah for himself. He's going to bend Judah. Watch this. Fill the bow with Ephraim. He says um, he's going to fill the bow with Ephraim. So you ever seen uh, like a bow and arrow? Uh huh. So he says he's gonna what? He's gonna bend Judah, and the arrow will be Ephraim. You see that thing? Because Judah will set the foundation. Watch this. Read the part again and fill the what? And fill the bow, with Ephraim. Come on. And raise up thy sons. Come on. O Zion, against thy sons, O uh -huh. peace. Against thy sons, O what? Peace. Against thy sons, O Greece. Let's talk about Mount Seir, the Edomites. Go ahead. And made thee as the sword of a mighty man. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's what the Lord says he's going to do for us. Guess what? Wait, right now, guess what the Lord is doing? He's bending Judah for him. That's what the Lord is doing. Ephraim is going to come in later. The other tribes will come in later. But right now, the Lord is bending Judah. That's why Judah is the first laborers into the vineyard. You understand? Judah is the first laborers into the vineyard. So now you have to imagine this war machine, this weapon of war. We are that weapon of war. Right now, the Lord is bending Judah. Right now. So that Judah can go out there and wake the people up and fill the bow with Ephraim. You understand? So that to be caught, it says, made thee a sword, the sword of a mighty man. Go ahead. And the Come Lord... On shall be seen over them. Come on. And his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. You see that thing? That goes into missiles now. It says, and the Lord shall be seen over them. Meaning what? The nation, all the, the most high God is going to make sure all the nations know we are the children of Israel. Go ahead. And the Lord shall be seen over them and uh -huh. his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. The, his arrow then, shall go forth. Hold on. His arrow shall go forth as the lightning. First and foremost, the arrow is this Bible. Go ahead. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet. Shall what? Blow the trumpet. The trumpet that the Lord is blowing this day is this Bible. Because the prophets are bringing it out. The, the trumpet the Lord is blowing is the Bible. Read. And shall go with whirlwinds of the south. You see that thing? The, it says he shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The whirlwinds talk about them chariots. Okay, let's go back now. Let's go back. Okay, let's go back to the. Let's go back to Matthew. Go back to Matthew chapter twenty and verse two again. The book of Matthew chapter twenty verse two. Come on. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, uh -huh. he sent them into his vineyard. So the first laborers into the vineyard that agreed with the householder for a penny a day, that's Judah. The Lord will raise the tribe of Judah first. And when Judah gets hold of this Bible, we went over all those pieces to show you who was the first laborers that was hired into this vineyard. 
the tribe of Judah. Okay, watch this. Now read verse 3 now. And he went out about the third hour mm -hmm. and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. You see that thing? As he went about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So now guess what? Now Judah is out there, is going to what? To wake the people up because the Lord is doing the hiring. We go out, we teach. The Lord is the one that picks and chooses who he wants to work in into his vineyard. That's what's going on here. So now what you are seeing here is uh, and so others standing idle in the marketplace. Who's standing idle, idle in the marketplace? The other tribes. You understand? The other tribes will be the one that are going to be brought into this vineyard. Because Judah is going out to bring them in. Watch this. Give me, because this third hour is going into time. You understand? It's a process of time. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 19 verse 9. Because I know there's a brother that asked me about this and I did not explain it. It was by design. Give me Exodus 19 verse 9. You know who you are. Exodus 19 verse 9. Okay, read that. Exodus 19 verse 9. Watch this. Hold on. Actually, you know what? Go back to Matthew 20. I want to show you something. Matthew chapter 20 verse 1. I'm in verse 2 again. Matthew 20 verse 2. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 20. Verses 2. Come on. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day. A what? He, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day. A penny a what? A day. A day. So he agreed with the laborers a, for a penny a day. A day. A day. I need you to pay attention to that thing. To agree with the laborers for a penny a day. Watch this. Exodus 19 verse 9 now. The book of Exodus chapter 19 verse 9. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. In a what? In a thick cloud. In a thick cloud. This is prophecy. This is during the time of Moses, but it's also going into the last days. Go ahead. That the people may hear when I speak with thee. The people may hear when the Lord speaks to Moses. Because today, how is the people here? Because we are Moses. We are Moses this day. How is the people hearing when the Lord speaks to us? Because we read the Bible. Go ahead. And believe thee forever. And do what? Believe thee forever. Meaning keep the commandments. Come on. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. You see that thing? Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. What did he say? Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. He says, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. Watch this. Give me John 17, verse 17. John chapter 17. The book of John chapter 17, verse 17. Right? Sanctify them. Through thy truth. Uh -huh. Thy word is truth. Thy what? Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. This is sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So when Moses was commanded to sanctify the people, yes, with the word of the Most High, that is the same thing we are doing today. We are Moses. We are sanctifying the people. You understand? We are sanctifying the people this day. Go back to Exodus chapter 19. Okay, Exodus 19, verse 10. The book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 10. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them. Today. Uh, and what? And meaning and cleanse them. Cleanse the people. How are we cleansing the people this day? We cleanse them with the word of God. Sanctify them. Where did he say? Go unto the people and sanctify them. Uh -huh. Today and tomorrow. Come on. And let them wash their clothes. And do what? Let them wash their clothes. And let the people wash their clothes. Hold this. Give me Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 3. It says, sanctify the people today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. Watch this. Zechariah 3 verse 3. The book of Zechariah. Chapter 3 verse 3. Come on. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. 
With what? With filthy garments. You see that thing? He was clothed with filthy garments. That's why it says what? Let them wash their clothes. Because what? Joshua was a Levite. He represented the priests. Guess what we are today? All Israel, we are kings and priests. Go ahead. The book of the Christ, the three verse three. Mm -hmm. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments mm -hmm. and stood before the angel. Come on. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. You see that thing? Take away the filthy garments from him. These filthy garments represent what? Sin. That's why it says, Sanctify them today and tomorrow. And what? And let them wash their clothes. Take off the filthy garments. Okay, come on. And come on. The book of the Christ, 3 verse 4. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused, I have caused an iniquity to pass from thee. That's the washing of the clothes. I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee. What is it? The filthy garments represent sin. He says, I've caused thy what? I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. Meaning what? I'm going to forgive you of your sins. Go ahead. And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. You see that thing? And I'm going to clothe you with change of raiment. Give me Psalms 132 verse 9. Psalms 132 verse 9. And I will clothe thee with change of garments. Watch this. Psalms 132 verse 9. The book of Psalms. Chapter 132, verse 9. Come on. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. Let thy priest be what? Clothed with righteousness. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. That's the change of garments. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Hold this. Let's go there. Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. Okay? Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. Mm -hmm. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our what? Our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. Come on. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he had commanded us. You see that thing? So righteousness is the keeping of God's laws. That's how we change garments and put on other garments, which is what? The word of God. That's how we must be clothed with God's commandments. That's the sanctification. That's the cleansing he's talking about. Go back to uh, Zechariah chapter 3 verse 4 now again. No, no, Psalms 132 verse 9. The book of Psalms 132 verse 9. Read. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. Uh -huh. And let the saints and let thy saints shout for joy. You see that thing? We must shout for joy because now what? The Lord is clothing us with righteousness. Go back to Zechariah now, chapter 3. Zechariah 3, verse 4. The book of Zechariah 3, verse 4. Uh -huh. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from me. And Jump I will back. clothe... I will read on, read on, come, come on. And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Because what? He says, let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. That's the change of raiment right there. Go back to Exodus chapter 19. Exodus 19 verse 10. The book remember, of he, remember he agreed with the, what? with the laborers for a penny a day. A penny a day. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 19 verse 10. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, go, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And let them wash their clothes. That's what it means. Let them wash their clothes, meaning what? Change, they must take off the filthy garments and put on what? A change of raiment, which is what? They must be clothed with righteousness. Okay, come on, verse 11. The book of Exodus chapter 19, verse 11. Read. And be ready. Against the third day. And be what? Ready against the third day. Remember it says today and tomorrow. So that's the first day and the second day. But it says now verse 11 says. And be ready against the third day.
be ready against the third day. Hold this. Go back to uh, Matthew 20, verse 2. Again, Matthew 20 and verse 2. The book of Matthew. Remember, remember, he's talking about a day. Then verse 3 in Matthew, he's talking about hours now. I need you to pay attention, you, bro you brothers, particularly you men. Sisters too, okay? Read that, Matthew 20. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 2. Uh -huh. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, come on, he sent them into his vineyard. So he agreed with us for a penny a day, a day. Go back to Exodus 19, verse 11. I don't want you to lose this thought. I need you brothers to follow and pay attention. Okay? Exodus 19, verse 11. The book of Exodus chapter 19, verse 11. Read. And be ready against the third day. And be ready against the third day. Remember, he agreed with us for a penny a day. We are in the third day right now. That's why he agreed with us for a penny a day. The third day he's talking about. Go ahead. And be ready against the third day. Mm -hmm. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. He says, for the, for the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. On the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Zion. That's Mount Sinai. That's Mount Zion. Watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Okay? Revelation 1 verse 7. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. The chariot. And that's talking about Christ. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Chariots. Read. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him. You see that thing? And every eye shall see him. It's the same thing it says. The Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Go ahead. And they also which pierced him, even all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even and so. all. And all the kindreds of the earth shall, be, shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. So the same thing that John the Revelator is saying here is the same thing that Moses is saying in Exodus 19. Go back to Exodus 19 verse 11. The book of Exodus chapter 19 verse 11. Read. And be ready against the third day. Be what? Be ready against the third day. That's what you are seeing right now. We are being, we are getting ourselves ready. Okay, because we are in the third day. That's why we are laboring in the Moses vineyard for a penny a day. The third day we are laboring because we are in the third day. Okay, come on. The book of Exodus chapter 19 verse 11. And be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Upon Mount Zana, upon Mount, Mount Sinai is Mount Zion. Mount Sinai is Mount Zion. Because Mount Zion is a people before it's a place. Okay, that's when the Lord will bring forth judgment on this earth. Right now, the Lord is getting our is, is allowing us to get ourselves ready. That's what we are doing right now. We have agreed with, with him for a penny a day because what day is that? The third day. Watch this. Now go back to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew 20 now, read verse 3. The you know what? Matthew. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Give me Hosea chapter 6 verse 1. Hosea. How can I forget that? Hosea 6 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Hosea 6 verse 1. Come on. Come. Let us return unto the Lord. Let us what? We let us return unto the Lord. That's, where, that's what we are doing right now. Returning unto the Most High God. To serve him in sincerity and in truth. Read. That's my parents. Sir. Uh, Hosea 6 verse 1 again. The book of Hosea 6 verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord. Come on. For he had torn and he will heal us. He, will, he had what? He had torn. He had torn. He had torn. That's when we went into slavery. He, we, we, we were torn. We are still torn. But the Lord is beginning to heal us. Okay, come on. For he had torn and he will heal us. That's what's going on right now. Come on. 
He had smitten. Uh -huh. And he will bind us up. That's what the Lord, that, that's the beginning process of us being bound up. Go ahead. After two days, will he revive us? After what? Two days, will he revive us? So after two days, will he, will the Lord revive us? Come on. After two days, will he revive us? Mm -hmm. In the third day, he will the raise what? us up. In the third day. In the third day, in the third day, after he says what? After two days, will he revive us? In the third day, will he raise us up and we shall live in his sight? Right now, we are in the third day. When it says after two days, watch this. Go back to Exodus 19. Exodus chapter 19, verse 10. Watch this. The book of Exodus chapter 19, verse 10. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today mm -hmm. and tomorrow. What did he say? Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow is the two days. Today and tomorrow is the two days in Hosea 6 verse 2. Today and tomorrow is the two days which we have passed the two days. We are in the third day right now. That's why the Lord is what is hiring laborers into his vineyard for a penny a day. What day is it? The third day. We are in the midst of that third day at this day. Understand that. Go back to Hosea 6. Verse 2 again. The book of Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. Come on. After two days, will he revive us? Right. In the third day, he will raise us up. Uh -huh. And we shall live in his sight. We are in that third day. So now, think about it now. This is now 2,000 years. Watch this. Second Peter's. Chapter 3, verse 8. Okay, Second Peter 3, verse 8. Watch this. Yes, sir. Second Peter 3, verse 8. Read that. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. Read. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Mm -hmm. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years. As a what? A thousand years. As a thousand years. It says one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Come on. And a thousand years as one day. So a thousand years for the most High God is one day and vice versa for us. You understand? So now when he says go back to Hosea 6 verse 2 again. The book of Hosea 6 verse 2. Read. After two days will he revive us. Will he what? Will he revive us? So after two days, meaning after 2,000 years, the Lord is going to revive us. This is after the 2,000 years. This is the third day now. Well, no longer is after with this, this time where we're at. This is the after the two days. We're in the midst of the third day. We're in the third day right now. That's what after the 2,000 years, Christ left the earth. Okay? Read. After two days, will he revive us? In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in the sight. So right now, we are in the third day. You understand? We are in the third day. We are in the third day. Watch this. Give me, remember, we're dealing with days now. The third day. We agreed with him for a penny a day. That day is talk about the third day. Now watch this. Give me, go back to Matthew now. Matthew 20, read verse 3 now. Matthew 20, verse 3. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 3. Come on. And he went out about the third hour. Uh -huh. And so others standing idle in the marketplace. You see that thing? And he went out about the third hour and so others standing idle in the marketplace. The third hour, remember, we're dealing with in the third day. Now, we are dealing with the hours of the day. You see that thing? Now we are dealing with the hours of the day. He went from a day to hours now. That's why it says the third day, the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. We went from days to hours. We went from the third that day to hours now. Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of John. Give me John chapter 5 is 28. John 5, 
28. Verse 28. The book of John. Chapter 5, verses 28. You know what? Start at verse 25. Read verse 25, then we're going to jump. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 25. Come on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. the, hour, the hour is coming, and now the is. The what? The hour is coming. The hour is coming, and what? And now is. And now is. That hour is now. That's what he's saying. The hour is coming and now is. Go ahead. The book of John, chapter 5. Okay, John, John 5, verse 25. Come on. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 25. I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. You see that thing? It says the hour has come that when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. Our people are waking up this day because they are spiritually dead. Give me that in Proverbs 21 verse 16. We're coming back. Proverbs 21 verse 16. The book of Proverbs chapter 21 verse 16. Come on. The man that wandered out of the way or out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You see, our people that are the congregation of the dead. Because why? Because they are spiritually dead. The laws of God is not being taught to them, so that's why they are walking zombies. Okay? But the Lord is promising that in the last days, guess what? The hour cometh where those that are dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and they will hear and they shall live. Go back to John now. Chapter 5 is 25. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 25. Come on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that shall hear shall live. Come on, jump down to verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, mm -hmm. in the which that all, in the which the hour is coming, in the which... All that are read in graves. Uh, no, no. Read that again. Read verse 28. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. You see that thing? All that are in the graves shall hear his voice, because our people are in the graves. What are those graves? Christianity is a grave. It's a grave. Okay. Politics is a grave. So our people are in graves. So our job is to wake them up from their dead estate. Spiritually dead. Mentally gone. Okay? Mental decay. Because our people are, oh, are suffering mental decay. So our job is to bring them out from those, from those graves, which is Christianity, Islam, politics, democracy, so on and so forth. Those are the graves he's talking about. Okay? Because that's, that the hour is now. That's why it says the hour is coming and now is. That's the hour. You understand? We went from days to hours now. Watch this. Give me John. John chapter 11. Okay. John chapter 11 and verse 9. John chapter 11 verse 9. Watch this. The book of John chapter 11 verse 9. Come on. Jesus answered. Are there not 12 hours in the day? What did he say? Jesus answered. Are there not 12 hours in the day? Are there not 12 hours in the day? And are there not 12 hours in the day? There's 12 hours in the day. Go ahead. Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. You see that thing? It says, if any more any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Guess what? Meaning what? You see the things that are going on in this world, because what? The Lord has woken you up. You understand? You see the things that are going on now. You are, you are aware. You can identify things, because you have spiritual eyes. You are, you are minding the time, and guess what you are doing? You are meditating on the laws of God. So that you're staying in the spirit. Watch this. Second Ezra 14 verse 10. He says, are there not 12 hours in the day? Remember, he says, the hour is coming and now is. 
Watch this. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 10. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 10. For the world had lost its youth, and the times begin to wax old. You know what? Wait, 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 wait. Give me First Thessalonians 5 and 1. Thessalonians. Let's start there first. Okay, I'm jumping ahead. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 1. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But at the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. So the apostle Paul is reminding the church in Thessalonica and so says, listen, but of the times and the seasons, meaning what? Measure the time. Measure the time, that's what he's saying. You have no need that I write unto you. Why? Because he's, he, the assumption is you are minding the time where we at. We are in the third day. And we are no longer in that. We are no longer. It's no, we are no longer in the 24 hours. It's a couple of hours now. That's what Christ is telling us. He's teaching us. trying to show us. Listen. It's no longer just the whole day that is left. No. It's a couple of hours that's left. Read that again. Verse 1. The book. First book of Thessalonica, chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Come on. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You see that thing? Meaning what? He's going to come when you, know, when you least expect it. So is what? It's important for you to stay in the spirit so that on that day, you know that the Lord will deliver you on that day. Okay? For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Nobody knows when the thief comes to rob their house. Don't nobody knows that. That's how Christ is going to show up. Okay, watch this. Give me second Ezra 9 and 1. Second Ezra. So he's teaching us to mind the time. Okay. It's a couple of hours. I went over this. I want to go into it some more. Watch this. Second Ezra 9 verse 1. Second book of Ezra 9 verse 1. He answered Come me on. then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. You see what he's saying? He says, measure thou the time diligently in itself. Mind the time. You understand? Don't be ignorant of the time as you are what? On your dirty day. You are, you are moving day to don't be ignorant of the times. Okay? Come on. Verse 1 again. Second Ezra 9 verse 1. Second book of Ezra chapter 9 verse 1. He answered me there and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. Come on. And when thou seest part of the signs past, Part of the what? Signs past. Part of the signs that are past. Meaning what? There's things that have happened be already. Slavery happened already. The transatlantic happened already. The Silk Road happened already. You understand? The sub-Sahara slave trade happened already. Those are some of the signs that have passed. 78 years happened already. Christ has been crucified. He died. He resurrected. He went back to the Most High God. Those are the signs of the time that have passed. So now we should know the time that our, the Lord, our Lord and Savior is what? He's getting to ready to make his second coming. Read. And when thou seest part of the signs, part of the signs past, which I have told thee before. Come on. Then shalt thou understand that this is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. You see that thing, man, meaning the Lord will begin to visit the world which he made. The Lord will begin to visit the earth that he created. And how is he visiting the earth? That's why you see the, the viruses, the diseases, the plagues, the poverty. You understand? Food shortages and all of that. That's, what's good. that's, the, time, that's the Lord visiting the earth. Okay? The floods. You understand? Heavy rains, heavy rainfalls that are going on. That's the Lord visiting the earth. Watch this. Give me Give me the book, 2 Ezra now, 14 verse 10. 2 book of Ezra, chapter 14 verse 10. For the world hath lost its youth, and the times begin to wax old. And the what? And the times begin to wax old. The times begin to wax old, meaning time is coming to an end. That's what he's saying. To what? The second coming of the Messiah. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. And the times begin to wax old. 
Uh-huh. For the world is divided into 12 parts. You see that thing? For the world is divided into 12 parts. That goes into the time. That's why in John, go back to John 11 verse 9. John chapter 11 verse 9. The book of John chapter 11 verse 9. Mm-hmm. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? Are there not 12 hours in the day? Read on. If any, if any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because Read. he seeth the light of this world. So now you need to really think, the most High God, we are engraved in anything that happens on this earth. Even the time is symbolic of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Understand that. It's not an accident that the 12 hours in the 12th, no. Everything is all interconnected and they are all working together for what? For the glory of the Most High God. That's another topic for another day. Okay, watch this. Second Ezra 14, verse 11. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 11. Pray. For the world is divided into 12 parts and the 10 parts of it are cornering. Mm-hmm. And half of the ten parts. So now it says the world is divided into twelve parts. Okay, meaning the what? When the world, hmm, the let's just keep it simple. The time. Okay, the world for it says for the verse ten says for the world has lost its youth, and the times begin to wax old. So the world is making reference to the times. Okay, verse eleven expounds it for the world is divided into twelve parts. That's the times. And the 10 parts of it are gone already. So the 10 parts. So you look at 12 hours. You understand? It says 10 hours is gone already. So we went from what? The day then to hours. Now he's letting you know. It says what? It says the 10 parts are gone already. And half of the 10 parts. Guess what? 30 minutes. Now we've got what? An hour and a half left. That's what he's saying. Yeah, that's where we end. An hour and a half. Okay? An hour and a half. Hmm. Funny. I'm not going to touch that. Go ahead. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14. Verse 12. Verses 12. Come and on. And they remaineth that which is after the half of the tenth part. He says, there remaineth that which is after the half of the tenth part. Meaning what? An hour and a half. That's what's left. That's what he's going into. So now... With the hiring of the laborers, guess what? Yes, in the process of time. And during the time of Ezra, guess what was going on? This is during the time of Ezra. This is during the Persian Empire. So guess what, 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 what has passed after that? Who came after the Persians? The Greeks. Then the Romans. Then the, dark, then the Dark Ages happened. Okay. Then the Renaissance happened. Okay. Then the, the transatlantic slave trade happened. The Silk Road, the sub sahara I mean, the subs, the, the Trans-Sahara, the Sub-Sahara, all of that has happened already. So guess what? We, not, we don't have an hour and a half left. <laughs> we don't have that. We don't have an hour, we don't have an hour and a half left. We don't have that left. So we need to be very mindful of where we at. Because brothers and sisters, we tend to forget. Okay? So we must be mindful of the time where we in. Watch this. Give me, go back, go back to Matthew now. Go back to Matthew, Matthew chapter 20, verse 3. Matthew chapter 20 and verse 3. The book of Matthew chapter 20, verse 3. Come on. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So now we are in the, it says the third hour. Okay, this goes into time. That's what we've been going over. It says, and so others standing idle in the marketplace, meaning our people that are without this truth, they are waiting for what? They are waiting for the true gospel of Christ to come to them. You understand? They are thirsty for this truth. They are waiting. That's why it says they are standing idle in the marketplace. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 10, verse 18. They are standing idle in the marketplace. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes. No, no. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 18. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verses 18. Come on. By much slothfulness, the building decay. You see that thing? By much slothfulness, the building decay. What building is that? The house of Israel. By much slothfulness, because the people are standing idle. Guess what happens? The spirit of slothfulness will jump on them. Go ahead. By much thoughtfulness, the building decay. Read. And through, and through idleness of hands, the house drop it through. And through idleness of the hands, the house drop it through. Through idleness of the hands, the house drop it through. Because guess what? The laborers that are supposed to be hired, they are standing idle in the marketplace. The street corners, you understand? The bottle stores, the shebeens. We see that thing? Um, the Ortizas. That's where they're at. The street corners selling drugs. They are standing idle in the marketplace. That's why I said, through much idleness of the hands, the house drop it through. Meaning what? The house will fall. Okay? Watch this. Give me Proverbs. Okay? Proverbs 19 verse 15. The book of Proverbs chapter 19 verse 15. Slothfulness cast it into a deep sleep. Mm -hmm. And an idle soul shall suffer hunger. You see that thing? And an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Because remember, he said he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day. Because with the penny, you get to what? You get to buy bread and all of that. That's going into the kingdom. The penny is the kingdom. So when he says, slothfulness casted into a deep sleep, because our people guess where they are. Deep sleep. They are the walking zombies. If you read Isaiah 29 verse 10, you understand? So it says, and, I, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger, meaning poverty. Poverty. That's what's going on with our people right now because our people, they are waiting for what to be hired. The Lord is the one that hired the laborers into the vineyard. The Lord is the one that does that thing. Watch this. Give me, um, go back to where he was at. Matthew chapter 20, verse 3 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 3. Come on. And he went out about the third hour mm -hmm. and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. You see that thing? They saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Read on. And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. Uh -huh. And they went their way. Come on. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. You see that thing? So in the sixth and the ninth hour, he did the same thing he did in what? In verse four. Meaning, go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right, I will give you. What is that? The penny a day, the laborers. Meaning what? Work. I'm going to give you what to do. That's what he's saying. Come on. And about the eleventh hour, he went out. And found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? So he's asking the question now, Why stand ye here all the day idle? Remember now, it was the third hour in verse 3, the sixth and ninth hour in verse 5. Now is the eleventh hour. Guess where we at? The eleventh hour. Meaning what? It's about to go boom. The thief is about to break in. That's, what, that's the, the time we're in right now. The thief is about to break into the house. That is what we are reading right here. Watch this. Go ahead. Keep reading. They said unto him, because no man hath hired us. Mm -hmm. He said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. You see, now he's telling, they say, well, listen, he says, the, he asked them, why stand ye here all the day idle? And they say unto him, because no man hath hired us. Because who's hiring the laborers into the vineyard? Christ is doing that. But our job is to go out and teach the people the laws of God and bring them into this truth. And Christ is the one that is going to pick and choose who's going to be worthy of this labor. That's what the Lord will do. You see that thing? The Lord is the one that is going to do that thing. Watch this. Give me... Give me the book, the book of Hebrews now. He says, because no man hath hired us. Because Christ is the one that does it. 
Christ is the one that does the hiring. Okay? Watch this. You know what? Second Timothy 1. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Read that. Uh, please repeat, sir. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. Read. Second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. He says we must partake in the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. That's why when we go out to teach, our people be giving us the middle finger and all of that like you saw today. Yeah, we must partake, we must take joy in that because we are partaking in the afflictions of what? Of the gospel according to the power of God. Come on. First book of Timothy. Second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. Verse Be 9. Not... Second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 9. Who had saved us and called us with an holy calling, mm -hmm. not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, right. which, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So now this calling, remember they said, because no man hath hired us. Guess what? Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling? Not a political one, not a democratic one, no, a holy calling. That's why each man, every man and woman in here, the Lord is the one that called you in here. That's why it says, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Before the most high God said, let there be light, guess what? Everybody knew what their role was going to be. Every one of us. Every one of us knows what your role is. You knew before the world was. So today when you come in, guess what? You are fulfilling the role that was given to you before the Lord said, let there be light. Understand that. Second Ezra 9 verse 18. Read that. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 18. And now, when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, uh -huh. even for them to dwell in that now live, Come on. No, man spoke, no man spoke against me. So now the Lord is, is, is telling Ezra, says, now when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, because the world is talking about Israel here, when he says, which was not yet made, he's talking about what? The world, the earth that we see. Okay, even for them to dwell in that now live, that them is talking about who? The world in the first part of the verse, when he, when he created us. Okay, no man speak against me. So the world is man that did not speak against Christ. When we, when we was created in the spirit realm, when we was with the Lord, no man, we didn't speak against him. We agreed you understand? That's why so we agreed with for a penny a day. We agreed. And when we agreed, guess what? We agreed before the world was. We agreed already. He says when he went, he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day. That agreement was before the world was. Understand that. Okay, come on. Verse 19. Verse 19. For then, everyone obeyed. Uh -huh. But now the manners of them which are created in this world, that is, are corrupted by a perpetual seed. Because we sin now. Go ahead. And by law, which is unsearchable, read themselves. Meaning what? We read ourselves of the laws of God. We reject God's commandments. We rejected it then. We are still rejecting it this day. But it says, for then everyone obeyed. We agreed. We agreed for a penny a day. We agreed. Before the world was, we agreed to this thing. Watch this. Give me John 10, 27. John 10, verse 27. That's why it's very important when you are given a task, get it done. You understand? Don't be... Don't, listen, just do it. You say we're going to do, let's get it done. Okay? John 10, verse 27. Read that. The book of John, chapter 10, verses 27. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, 
and they follow me. You see that thing? My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Because guess what? In the spirit realm, the voice that you knew was the voice of Christ. That's why when the scriptures come out, those that are approved that the Lord wants to bring into this truth, when they hear it, they're going to say, that's me right there. No, if maybe, but mm -mm, they're going to, that's me right, that's talking about me right there. Read that again, verse 27. The book of John chapter 10, verse 27. Read. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That's what, that's what we're doing right now. We're following Christ, because we only know his voice. That's why you, were, you went to the Christian church. It, didn't co it, was, it, it was not compatible. You were vibrating in one frequency, there was vibrating in another. You are just there as matter occupying space. And then you went to another one. A lot of us, I'm giving myself, I went to Jehovah's Witness. I went to the Zaba Zalwani. I went to um, Seven Day Disadvantage. I've been there. You understand? At some point, I even almost tried Islam. That's why I have the Quran. Don't get it twisted. I've been around looking for stuff. Looking for what? Identity. You understand? So, that's why, and when, when, when these things were brought up, it just didn't, it just, our, it just didn't work out. It's like, I, do, I hear you, but I don't get it. It wasn't computing until this truth came out. I was like, that, that's what I've been looking for all my life right there. So, read that again, verse 27, John 10. Okay? The book of John 10, verse 27. My Come sheep on. hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John 17, verse 5, read that. The book of John, chapter 17, verse 5. Read. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, and with glory which I had with thee before the world was. You see that thing? It says, glorify thou me, Father. You understand? With the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Meaning from the beginning. So guess what? When Christ came, guess what he did? Watch this. Read verse 4. The book of John chapter 10 verse 17. No, no. John. John 17 verse 4. Chapter 17 verse 4. Read. I have glorified thee on the earth. Uh -huh. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. You see that thing? Because he did what? He did the will of the Father. Before the world was, he was already ordained to do this thing. Just like we were ordained before the world was to do what we are doing this day. It's a what? This thing is a calling that was given to you before everything that you see was created. This was given. It was already. This thing was. The, being a prophet, you, you were born. You are prophets. It was planted in you in the spirit realm. Before anything that you see right now, before you see it, yes, it was already planted in you. This is some heavy stuff right here. So now today you are called in, oh man, I'm an Israelite and all of that. And then after a while, guess what? You start to lose the fire. It's because you don't understand. You don't get it. Because this calling was given to you before the world was. So you need to go back and say, wait a minute, I agree to this thing. That's why when Moses, we was in the wilderness with Moses, he taught us the law. We say we agree. Guess what? That's not what the first time. Because when we was with the Lord, we agreed. Nobody, nobody disagreed with this. It's only when we came on this earth with these earthly tabernacles, with these frail bodies we got, we started to worship the, the transportation system. You see that thing? Because this body is just the transport. But when we was in the spirit realm, we didn't worship nothing but the Most High God. Now, when we came on this earth, now we are free. I feel I do. Mm, you see that? Now we started. We start to worship the bodies we got now. That's why there was problems in the wilderness with Moses. That's why there's problems today. Now, some heavy stuff right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew, John five, John five is thirty. The book of John, chapter five. Verses 30. Read. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, 
but the will of the Father which hath sent me. That's the mindset we all must have. He says, I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Our job is to do the will of the Father. That's why when you read Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13, that's the same thing that Christ is saying. Here. That's a precept, by the way. You understand? This is a precept. You must what? He says, I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. That's the mindset we all must have. Same thing. You understand? We must seek after the will of the Father. You understand? Because we was created to do what? That was our whole duty was to serve the Most High God and keep his commandments. Watch this. Give me Hebrews chapter 4. Because remember, the Lord hired us into this vineyard. Okay? He hired us into the vineyard and said, because no man hath hired us. Every one of you in here have been hired by the Most High God. Christ brought you in here. Your job is to labor into the vineyard. Okay? And understand that you're the, the purpose of you being born is to fear God and keep his commandments. Understand that. Because that's your true profession. Hebrews 4, verse 14. Read what you got. Hebrews 4, verse 14. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 14. Come on. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. That's Jesus the Christ. And that is passed into the heavens. Uh -huh. Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Let us what? Hold fast our profession. Hold fast our profession. He says, let us hold fast our, our profession. The, what is the profession? To be the prophets of the Most High God. That's our duty upon this earth. Let us hold fast our profession. Meaning, don't waver, don't go left or right. Be steadfast in your understanding. Watch this. Hebrews 10, 23. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 23. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 23. Come on. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Uh -huh. For he is faithful and promised. No, no. He is faithful that promised. He says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, without being double-minded. Because a lot of the times, this is what you're going to find out. Brothers will come into the truth. They will come into the camp. They will fellowship with us. They just disappear. It has happened before in the camp. They just disappear. And when they come back a couple of months later, guess what? No, I had problems. I had this. Wait a minute. You think we don't have problems? We all have problems, but you just hold, you have to hold fast. Okay? Because when you say I have problems and you separate yourself from the body, you got the devil on you. How can you now you have problems, now you separate yourself from the body? You are going through trials, you separate yourself from the body. No, 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 no. You're supposed to what? You're supposed to what? To hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering. You must hold on because the Lord is with you. But when you depart from the brethren, you don't believe this Bible. You don't believe and I'm not going to have time for you. I'm going to tell you right now. Read that again. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 10, verse 23. Come on. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Come on. Because the Lord us, is faithful that promises the kingdom. He's faithful. Hold on. He's faithful. The Most High God is faithful because guess what? He promised that we will receive the kingdom if we labor for a penny a day. That's the promise. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach, chapter 1. Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 28. Read that. Sirach 1, verse 28. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Without, don't be wavering. Don't be double-minded. That's what he's saying. Don't be one foot in and one foot out. Sirach 1, verse 28. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 28. Come on. Distrust not the fear of the Lord. When thou art come poor, on, and come not unto Amen. him with a double heart. You see what the Lord is saying? Don't come to the Most High God with a double mind. 
Don't be wavering. You let your yay be yay, let your nays be nays. That's it. Don't be wavering. Okay? Because when you waver, guess what? You're, you're not holding fast the profession of your faith. That means you don't believe this. You don't take this seriously as you should. Watch this. James 1 and 8. James chapter 1 verse 8. The book of James chapter 1 verse 8. A double-minded James man. James 1 and 8. Come on. The book of James chapter 1 verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable Red. in all his ways. You see that thing? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So don't come before the Most High God with a double mind. Because when you move like that, the Lord will not bless you. Understand that. Watch this. Go back to the book of Matthew chapter 20. Okay, Matthew 20. Matthew chapter 20 and verse, verse 6 again. The book of Matthew. No, verse 7. Verse 7. The book of Matthew, the 20 verse 7. They say unto him, because no man hath hired us, he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Come on. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said yeah. unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire. Beginning Come on. from the last unto the first. Read that again, verse 8. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 8. So when even was come, the Lord said unto his vineyard, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. You see that thing? It says, call the laborers now. Again, now is the even. It says, when the even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his stewards, call the laborers and give them their hire. Meaning what? Give them their reward. You see that thing? Beginning from the last unto the first. Beginning with the last unto the first. Meaning what? The last will be first and the first will be last. Now there's a heavy parable going on here. I'm not going to deal with it tonight, but I'll say, I'll put it like this. The first laborers was Judah, right? Judah, then Benjamin and Levi. Then the last that is going to come in is Northern Kingdom. Northern Kingdom is the ones that are going to get the reward first. You might think, oh, that's unfair. No, 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 no. We agreed for a penny. <laughs> we agreed to that we want the kingdom. So you can't be saying, they're just coming in the last hour and they're going to get paid the same as us. Yes. <laughs> you see that thing? Read the part again, <laughs> verse, verse 9, no, verse 8. The book of Matthew chapter 20, verse 8. So even, come on. so when even has come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when Hold they on. came... Wait, wait, wait. Give me Revelation 2, 26. Wait, wait. Revelation 2, verse 26. Watch this. The book of Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Okay. It says, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. The works is the laws, the commandments, meaning what? Fruits meet for repentance, like we read last night in John 3. Okay. Unto the end, until we die in this truth or the Lord returns. To him will I give power over the nations. That's the reward. Watch this, come on. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron. As the come vessels on. of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Meaning the reward that the Lord, the Christ is going to receive of his father, he is going to share that reward with us. Come on. And I will give him the morning star. He says, I'm going to give him the morning star. Meaning what? He's going to give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He's going to switch on. He's going to switch on our candle. That spiritual 
that spiritual understanding that we used to have before the world was those God bodies that we used to have, the Lord is going to give all of that, all of those things back to us. And then some watch this. He says, and I will give him the morning star. Give me the book of revelation, right? Chapter. You know, my Bible, I can't even see nothing now. Revelation 2 verse 17. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And will give him... The hidden manna is that under... Hold on. Wait. The hidden manna is them deep parables, them heavy understandings. That's the hidden manna. Okay? That understanding that we're only going to receive it when the Lord returns. The hidden man. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and he says he what? The, and will give him a white stone. Will give him a white stone. He says, and I'm going to give him a white stone. I'm going to give him the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone. Next part of the verse. Come on. And and in the stone, a name written, which no, no man... No, 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 no. No, no, no. It says, a white stone, and in the stone, a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Meaning what? You're going to get your name on that day. Your true name. The name that was given to you before the world was, you're going to get it on that day. You see that thing? When your name is called, guess what? We're going to be seeing a brother stand up and say, that's Abraham right there. That's right. That's Abraham right there. On that day. You understand? That includes the women as well. Their sisters too. It's not just the men that are going to receive that white stone. The sisters will receive it. That's Judith right That sister right there? Yeah, that's Judith right there. That sister, that's our foremother, Sarah, right? That's her right there. Okay, on that day. The hidden manner and the new, the, old, your, the name that the Lord gave to you before the world was. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay, that's the reward. Watch this. Go back to Matthew chapter 20 and verse 8. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 8. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto, said unto his steward, call the laborers and no, no, give them no. the... Could you start the... Read the verse from the top again. You're just starting from the Lord of the vineyard. Read verse 8 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 8. So when even was come, the mm -hmm. Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. Beginning from the last unto the first. Remember who was hired first. Judah was hired first. Who was hired last? Ephraim. But Ephraim is gonna be is gonna get the reward first, and then Judah will follow. Go ahead. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour. They received every man a penny. You see that thing? As, and when they came, and when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, who was hired about the 11th hour? Ephraim. Ephraim, Northern Kingdom, they were hired in the 11th hour. So the, the third, the sixth, the ninth, it was all Judah. Then the 11th hour comes Ephraim. Okay, the sons of Joseph. Watch this. The 11th hour, they received every man a penny. Meaning what? They come in the last minute, they just take over. They just take, meaning they receive the same reward as those that were laboring the 3rd, the 6th, and the ninth hour. Read on. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. You see? <laughs> so it says, but when the first came, they suppose that they should have received more. Go ahead. And they likewise received every man a penny. So now the first, the, the first hires, 
those that were hired first, they thought, listen, we need to receive, we must receive more. We've been laboring more than all of them, okay? And they likewise, meaning they also, they received a man, every man a penny. Go ahead, watch this. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good men of the house. <laughs> That's Israel for you, okay? It says when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. The good man of the house is the householder that hired a laborers to work in his, his, in his vineyard. We agreed for a penny a day. That's what, that was the agreement. Now, when we're given the penny, we're complaining. But we agreed for the penny. Okay, come on. The book of Matthew chapter 20 verse 12. Saying, these last have wrought, but these last have wrought, but one hour. And thou he hast said, made last, They just coming in the last minute. Hold on. Wait, wait. It's a saying, these last have wrought but one hour. They just only just been here for an hour. But what? These last and have thou wrought what? but one hour. And thou hast made them equal unto us. Read. Which have borne the burden and heat of the day. You see that thing? So he said, you're going to make them equal to us? They're just arriving. Read on. Watch this. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Did thou not, did not thou agree with me for a penny? But that's not it. <laughs> that's exactly what went down. We agreed for a penny. Now, the ni niggas are complaining now. You're going to make them equal to us. You're going to be laboring. Now, Northern Kingdom just comes out of nowhere in the last minute and they get the penny as well. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 14. Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. He says, I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Meaning these last that came in, these last, these, they, these that came in last, I'm going to give them the same way I'm going to give unto you, or I have given unto you. Go ahead. Is it not lawful? Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine, is thine eye evil because I am good? Because you see what he's saying? He says, is it not lawful for me to do what I will, I will? with mine own, because also those that came in the last hour, they also belong to Christ. You understand? They belong to the men, the good men of the house. They are part of the 12 tribes of Israel. So does that mean there's not going to be order? No, it don't mean that. It don't mean that. What is this, talk? What is this really going into? Meaning what? We're going to receive the kingdom, all of us, the 12 tribes that endure unto the end. But there will be order in the kingdom. Don't get it twisted. There will be order. So the penny is what? The, the what? The, the, the kingdom. Yes, we will receive the kingdom. You will be in the kingdom. But that's the subject matter here. Okay, come on. Verse 15. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? Right? So the last shall be first. And the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. That's the, that's the whole point of the parable. Read that part again. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, the 16. So the last shall be first. And the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. Okay, he says, Matthew chapter 20, verse 16. So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. So many are called, but few are chosen. That's what Christ is saying. Because, but all they have agreed for a penny a day, they're all going to receive the kingdom. But every man is going to receive according to his own labor. That's the point. They're going to, all everybody going to receive the kingdom that keep the commandments. Okay. But there will be order based on the labor that you put in. That's what he's saying right there. Read that part again. Verse 16. The book of Matthew chapter 20 verse 16. 
So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. You see that thing? For many be called, but few chosen. There will be order in the kingdom. There will be order in the kingdom, as in the days of old. The same it was with Christ and the twelve, so likewise it will be in the kingdom. There's not going to be no everybody equal. No, that's not going to happen in the kingdom. It's not going to happen. Like the same way we're setting it up now, the same way likewise it will be in the kingdom. Understand that. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew. Okay, Matthew chapter 22. No, no, give me Sirach 33 verse 16. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 33. Verse 16. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 16. I awakened up last of all. As one okay, that wait, wait. Hold on. Wait. Sirach 33, verse 16 says, I awaked up last of all, as one that gathered after the grape gatherers, by the blessing of the Lord, I profited and filled my wine press like a gatherer of grapes. So, Sirach, what he's saying right here, that's some heavy stuff right here. He says, I awake up last of all, as one that gathereth after the grape gatherers. Guess what? In the last days, the Lord will wake us up. That's what he's doing right now. The first laborers of this vineyard is going to be Judah. Okay? And the ones that are going to come in last in the 11th hour is Ephraim, the rest of the tribes. And who's going to bring them in? Judah will bring them in. That's the point. Okay, read that. Read now. Read verse 16 again now. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 16. I await the blast of God as one that gathered uh -huh. after the grape gatherers. By the blessing of the Lord, I profited and filled my wine press like a gatherer of grapes. So now, remember, this is Christ speaking. This is the spirit of Christ speaking here. Watch this. I awake up last of all. Give me, give me the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 book of Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. 1 Corinthians. Come on. For I think that God had set forth as the apostles last. The apostles when? Last. The apostles last. I need you to read the right pronouns here. He says, the apostles last. The apostles last. Read that again, verse 9. First book of Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. For I think that God had set forth us the apostles last. The apostles last. The apostles last. That's why it says, I awake up last of all. Because in the last days, he will wake up what? The true teachers will be woken up last. That's what you are seeing now. And in those teachers that are woken up last, Judah will be the first laborers into the vineyard to gather the rest of the tribes. Those that come in, in the, the 11th hour will be gathered by Judah. Go ahead. As it were appointed to death. Come on. For, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels. And to me. Go back to Sarah 33 verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 33 verse 16. I Wait. awake the blast of all. As one that I awake the blast of all. That's, hold on. I awake the blast of all. That's what we just read in the book of First Corinthians 4 verse 9. I awake the blast of all. Okay. When is the last of all? Is not talking about what? Is not talking about Ephraim. Is talking about the 12 tribes of Israel being awoke, awakened in the last days, okay? And out of those 12 tribes, Judah will be woken up first as what? As laborers into the vineyard. That's why you're seeing us laboring in the vineyard right now. Okay, come on. I as awake the blast of all as one that mm -hmm. gathereth after the grape gatherers. As one that gathereth after the grape gatherers. Because the grape, grape gatherers, what are they gathering? They are gathering grapes. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 20. Second book of Ezra chapter 9 verse 20. Come on. Second book of Ezra chapter 9 verse 20. 
So I considered the world, and behold, there was a peril because of the devices that were come in, that were come into it. The perils is the trials, the troubles, the oppression, the depression. Okay, that's what he's talking about. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the device, meaning the evils that we come into it. Sin. Read on. Verse 21, come on. And I saw and spared greatly, and have kept me a grape of a cluster and a plant of a great pe of a great people. Okay, you are pausing a lot. Read verse 21 again. Read it for me nicely. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 21. And I saw and spared great. Come on. And have kept me a grape of He says he saw the world. Hold on. He is wait. He saw the world and he spared it greatly. He says, I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. And I saw and spared it greatly. He saw the world and spared it greatly. What the world is talking about? The world of the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes. And have kept me a grape of the cluster. You see what he's saying? He's not saying grapes. He's saying, I kept me a grape. Singular, a grape. Many are called, few are chosen. Many are called, few are, many are called to, this, to, to the vineyard, but only few will be chosen. That's some heavy stuff right there. Many are called, but few are chosen. So when you're playing games in this truth, listen, you don't want to be one of the chosen. You're playing games. This is not the kingdom of heaven. Understand that. This is the way to the kingdom of heaven. So many are called, but few are chosen. So when you don't study, you're playing games in this truth. Many are called, and few are chosen. Read that part again, verse 21. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 21. And I hey. saw and spared greatly, and have kept me a grape of a cluster, and a plant of, that of cluster. a cluster. It says, kept me a grape of the cluster. The cluster, come on. And have kept me a grape of the cluster. Read. And a plant of a great people. And a plant of a great people. We are that great people. Go ahead, watch this. Let the multitude perish there, which was born in vain. That's Let the my great stuff right there. Hold on. Let the multitude perish. That's the many. The multitude is the many. It says, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. They were born just so that they can be put to death. That's some heavy stuff right there. Two thirds of our people will not make it out. They were born in vain just to be put to death. Give me Isaiah 22 verse 14. Watch this. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Isaiah 22, verse 14. Watch this. The book Isaiah, chapter 22, verses 14. Come on. And it was revealed in my ears by the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till you die, say the Lord of hosts. Come on. You see that thing? It says, this iniquity will not be purged from you till you die. Meaning the only way to purge the iniquity from our people that will not repent is to put them to death. That's what the Lord is saying. Go back to 2nd Ezra 9, verse 21. 2nd book of Ezra 9, verse 22. Read. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Let, Let, the multitude perish then. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Those that, when the Lord says, this iniquity shall not be perished from you till ye die. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Go ahead. And let my grape be kept. And let my, my what? And let my grape be kept. And let my grape, grape, one singular, let my grape be kept. Out of the cluster, he only wants one grape. So just look at the cluster of grapes. The Lord is only looking for one grape out of that cluster. Read on. 
and let my grape be kept and my plant. For with great labor have I made it perfect. You see that thing? For with great labor, labor, labor. That's why we are called into what the most high God's vineyard to do what? To labor. With great labor have I made it perfect. Because the only way we're going to reach that level of perfection, we must labor. And the way the most high God is going to make us to labor is to what? Keep the commandments. Enjoy. You understand? Help one another. Love one another. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Observe the civil laws, the moral laws, the dietary laws, the, what, the ceremonial laws. Guess what? And offer sacrifices of righteousness. That's what the Lord is looking for. That's what the Lord wants. That's how we're going to what? glorify the Most High God this day. And the Lord will glorify us afterwards. We glorify him, the Lord will glorify us. Understand that. That's why it says, for with great labor have I made it perfect. What is the labor? The labor that we just be reading in Matthew 20. Okay? Watch this. Give me Matthew 22 verse 14. The book of Matthew. Verse 22. Verse 14. Come on. For many are called, but few are chosen. You see that thing? Many are called, but few are chosen. The many that are called, out of those many, only one grape will be chosen out of that cluster. Look at the ratio. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Go back to Matthew 20. Matthew chapter 20 and verse... Matthew 20 verse 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 16. Come on. So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. You see that thing? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few be, few be chosen. So now you need to look at this and say, wait a minute. So he's saying, the last shall be first. We know, that's Ephraim, we shall be first meaning rewarded first. They want to be given the penny, okay? And the first shall be last. Now, you need to really think, the first will be last to be rewarded, okay? It says, for many be called, but few chosen. So when it says the first will be last, watch this. Give me, give me Matthew chapter 23, okay? Matthew chapter 23, verse 11, watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 11. Read. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Read that again. Read it right. Read it again. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 11. But mm -hmm. he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. You see that thing? It says, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant he that is greatest among you shall be your servant now you see that part right there but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant who was hired first judah was hired first watch this he was what he was laboring from the ninth the ninth hour okay the third hour the ninth the sixth and the ninth and the, the eleventh the, the northern kingdom came in and there was rewarded first. But it says, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Now watch this. Go back to Genesis 49 now. Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 8. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verses 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. You see that thing? Jura thou art he, hold on. Jura thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. I need you to follow me. Come on. Jura thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. You see that thing? Because he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Because what is Jura doing out there? Serving. Laboring into the vineyard, bringing Israel in in the spirit of Christ. That's what Jura is doing. Jura is the one that is teaching the people the law. Judah is the one that's teaching, giving the people the understanding in the spirit of Christ. You understand? That's why it says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Read. 
Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children uh-huh. shall bow down before thee. Meaning what? They're going to give the tribe of Judah honor. That's what that's me. They're going to give the, we're all going to get the kingdom, but Judah is going to be honored. For what? For being raised up and, and teaching the tribes who they are in the spirit of Christ. And the main one that is going to be honored from the tribe of Judah, guess who that is? Jesus the Christ. Okay? Jesus the Christ, he's the one. Because this kingdom that we are laboring in, that's his kingdom. Who the father is going to give unto him and Christ is going to share that kingdom with us. You understand? He's going to share that kingdom with us. That's the point. Okay? Watch this. Read that again, verse 8. The book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand Mm -hmm. shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Come down to verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter, meaning what? The scepter of rulership will not depart from the tribe of Judah. Go ahead. No a lawgiver from between his feet. You see that Until... thing? No a lawgiver, no a lawgiver from between his feet. Meaning what? Judah is the lawgiver. Come on. Until Shiloh come. Until Christ come. Shiloh is the peaceable one. Christ. Read. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Unto Christ shall the gathering of the twelve tribes of Israel be. Unto him, unto the Shiloh, which is Christ, shall the gathering of the people be. Christ is the one that is going to gather in the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. He's the one that's doing it. All over the world, wherever we are, however, however oppressed we are, the Lord will raise up prophets in all the areas where we are scattered to do what? To bring the truth unto them. Until Shiloh come, he's the one that is gathering the people right now. Okay? He's always been the one. That spirit of Christ right there. Watch this. Okay? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Now I'm going to end the class right here. I'm going to end it right here. Okay? Let me not just add too much. I'm going to end it right here. Okay? Let's break bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had sat, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and, tr- and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most our hand for that. All praises to the most.